Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today we're going to be doing some problem diagnosis. I doubt if I can fix this reel today, but this one came to me from a neighbor, uh, Eric, who brought the reel over and said he had a great day fishing uh, in the, uh, the local bay. We were, uh, it's striped bass season, and he, uh, he got quite a few uh, striped bass, catch and release kind of thing. But uh, when he got done, the reel is totally jammed. I mean, you have a swing here, and he says, what in the world is going on? I don't understand that this is actually backpedaling uh, in front. Very, very kind of just stuck, right? It just gets to a point and sticks. So he said, could I, uh, could I fix it for him? Well, in order to fix it for him, you, you kind of have to go figure out what's wrong with it first. So I thought that's what we would do the video on today. So I'm going to show you if you have a spinning reel. In this case, this is the... Uh, uh, Daiwa BG 4000. It's a beautiful reel. I'll show you how to take it apart step by step, do a little bit of analysis, see if we can't uh, get closer to where the problem is occurring. And then, of course, if it's a broken part, uh, then we'll, we'll see what we can do there. I have my thoughts, but uh, let's just uh, let's see if we can't pull this out and show you the various steps that I would use to diagnose the problem. So we know we've, we've got something that's getting stuck right around there. Stuck again there, right? High spot. My thought is a bent axle shaft, right? But we'll see. Now those fish that uh, Eric was catching were big fish. It can, at the top of the stroke, pull the axle shaft to a warp position and cause that issue. So let's let's show you how I diagnose the reel in general. Let's show you how to take this reel apart if you own it. I'll show you how to service it while we're at it, but uh, the service won't be complete because I'm certain that there's a broken part there. So I'm going to start by removing the external pieces and parts, and as I do, those of you that watch my channel know I like to stop for a moment and thank our first responders and essential personnel for everything they're doing to keep us safe during the pandemic. Without their efforts, uh, we truly would be in what much worse shape than uh, we are, and I uh, appreciate everything it is that you do. Doctors, nurses, first responders, police, fire, EMTs, first aid squad personnel, and our supply chain folks, those in the, the grocery stores, those delivering the vaccines, those that are doing uh, yeoman service here just to keep us safe. Thank you. There's a uh, ball bearing on this shaft that's going to ride in that spool there. So I'm going to take this off because that's how you're going to remove your rotor. So that we have a little bit of a, a bearing and a little cap that goes on top of that. That's where that bearing sits. We have a shim washer or two which controls the line height on the spool and we have a click ratchet which this little tongue interacts with and as that um, is, is backpedaling that'll make a little snapping noise or a click noise. We're going to take that off. And now I can remove the, the rotor but before I do that I want to test was it the spool that was causing the problem? Well, no. <laughs> that was an easy answer. Didn't pass the test there, right? We're, we're still really tight. Something really odd is happening here. All right. Next up, then, we're going to take the sp uh, spool off. i got to get a, uh, looks like, a micro driver for that. There's a set, set screw there that's holding that, um, that nut in. So we're going to get the, the wrench or a... Uh, in this case, a micro driver to get that uh, screw out. This is a good time to tell you to take pictures along the way here. As you're dis disassembling, you're going to want to take the pictures so you know where the, the pieces are when you go to reinstall. Um, you could get the schematic. At this point, I'm doing a problem diagnosis, so I'm not really that concerned about the schematic issue. But uh, it could lead to uh, where you need that on the return. All right, this one had a tie down. It's a 14 millimeter nut. It comes out in a counterclockwise or traditional way. And all my pieces and parts are going into a parts tray. The reason for that is I, I like to know where they are when I go to reinstall. That parts tray is nothing more than the bottom of a fast food container. All right, that should enable us to remove this rotor. Test again. Nope, nothing's. Still, still binding here, right? So we can do two things now. We can get underneath here to take a look. 
So let's go do that. This has got the anti-reverse gear in it. I doubt that that's the issue at the moment. You want to check your handle. I'm not certain if this is a through handle or not. So we're just going to gently grab that uh, cap there, turn it backwards, and uh, I'm not sure on this one what's going on there. Let's see if we can back this out and remove the handle. We can. Okay. So that um, this gear has got a, a, a screw through on both sides. Uh, so that you can reverse the handle simply by just moving that collar about. It's kind of an interesting approach there. I'm going to put the cap back on because that cap had nothing to do with removing the handle and also it will remind me that the handle belongs on the other side. All right, let's take three pieces apart here. And my guess is I have a warped or a uh, bad axle shaft. We'll see if we can visually inspect this next step to determine if we have a broken part inside. Now, because it only went and got stuck, it's getting stuck at odd points, but it seemed to be getting stuck more so at the, the one end of the stroke there. That was my guess on that axle shaft. So I was talking with Jane from Jane's Real Repair. And she's located down in uh, Mississippi on the, uh, the border with Tennessee. And uh, we were going through a kind of a verbal conversation about something just like this. She was working on a Penn Fierce reel. It was terribly salted and it wasn't moving. And uh, she, she was asking my thoughts in terms of you know, what it could be. And I said, well, the best thing to do is just kind of do what we're doing here. Take these things apart and eliminate or narrow down your possibilities. Okay, so I just ran into the misfortune of having my camera stop, and I don't remember where I was. So I hastily put some stuff back on, and I'm going to apologize if I'm a little bit out of sync. Let's just review where we are to this point. We took off the rotor. We tested. We found out it was still sticking. We uh, next want to get underneath here. With the rotor off, we can remove the side plate. Those are three, three screws and a bump guard. Now I've taken the bump guard off already, and again I have to apologize a little bit. I got ahead of myself and I didn't realize that the video had stopped working for a dead battery. But uh, if that's the worst thing that happens to me today, I guess I'm okay. So we're taking the three side plate screws off now. That'll enable us to get inside the side plate. And we'll uh, see if we can recreate the problem now. So side plate with the bump guard off. The bump guard was fitted like this. There's a slot here that goes inside the bump guard. There's a screw down here. That already was taken off when I thought the camera was performing properly. And this gives us a look to the inside. We have a bearing on the side plate here. We have our main gear. We have a little bit of a different crosswind block. It's riding on two channels. And the first test we want to do is see if I have a warped or a bent axle, because that's kind of what my theory is here. This is kind of weird. If you look at your crosswind block, you don't see any attachments. Well, that's because the award for engineering for sticky stuff, hiding screws, comes to this one today. There is a Phillips head screw that holds your crosswind axle in from the side. I hope you can all see that. I'm using a micro driver to get that out. There we go. We're done. And I always keep things like these pliers and that nearby in case I need to go reaching for them. That goes into my parts tray. I should be able to hold that crosswind block now and pull the axle out. Well, that was an interesting test right there because my thought was that it was the, the um, crosswind block that, uh, I'm sorry, it was the axle that was worn, and that slipped right out. So that's your first test, is to kind of move it in and out, 
Now there's a little tightness down there, but that'll never make it up to the cross wind block. I'm sorry, to the gear. So if this is moving smoothly, then it's not your axle shaft. So let's kind of go a little bit more inside then. This is uh, two posts holding your, um, your cross wind block. It kind of pivots so you can pull the first post out. The second post goes through the case here. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And what I noticed before and what I have to apologize here for is that we had determined that the problem here was on the top end of the stroke. And I had uh, gone ahead, took a look, and found out that there was all kinds of grease and debris in this little channel here. And as it came up to the top of the stroke, it bumped the bottom of the main gear and couldn't complete that full cycle. So what I did is I went in and I grabbed a round file and I kind of worked it all off. Got it cleaned up. And then I noticed that this back channel was also totally loaded with old, old grease. So it could have been that it was either the channel here or with all the old grease accumulated in the corners, this stud may not have been able to complete the travel because it was bumping up against the, the junk. Well, it's clean now, and uh, so is the inside of the real case. I noticed here, you can see some that there's some residual salt here, and there's a lot of salt inside the gear here. And I'll just uh, I'll grab a screwdriver just to kind of show you just how much that is. And that's what was on that main uh, cross wind block. So you can see that that's the case. Now, because that thing was grinding away there, right, every time it came to the top stroke, it became problematic. You want to make certain that these teeth in this main gear are okay. So you want to check. You want to do that by kind of doing what I just did. Get some penetrating oil and then get a a brush to clear the channels of these teeth. And then do an inspection. Make sure that they're not bent. And particularly look at them this way. You want to make sure that all those teeth are the same height, nice even height. These appear to be okay. All right, so the last thing I want to show you on this one, because we're talking about possibly servicing this reel as well, is let's show you the top end of this. Then we'll put it all back together and see if that, um, that debris in there was what the cause of this issue was. Now normally I would put these pieces and parts right into my parts tray, but uh, I'm not going to do that right here because the... Uh... Alright, so next up then we have this instant anti-reverse. That anti-reverse is sitting on a pin here, it's just a dead stud. It kind of holds it in place to anchor it. Let's pull that off. Pull the shaft off. Then we have two screws underneath here that are holding a collar. So let's go ahead and take those out. One on this side as well. They should be loose now. We should be able to pull that axle shaft out. So there you go. We pulled the collar with the two screws. Here's a bearing. Since uh, we're talking about uh, maintaining this in addition to just solving a problem, I'm going to make sure that that bearing gets a good amount of oil in it. There's a bearing washer that's underneath that. You want to do the same thing here that we did on the last one. You want to come in with a brush, clean out the panel. Notice there's a little washer on the bottom here too. Don't lose that. Right, and inspect this to make sure this wasn't ground up while they were fighting that uh, that urge to get this thing going again. Let's grab our brush now. When everything has been cleaned and checked, you can re-lubricate the, the reel. And that's another thing. This thing, this reel is not showing any signs of a recent service. So obviously, if you've got salt buildup inside that channel, make sure that you clean the inner channel here as well while you're doing your service. There's some built up grease and stuff and that kind of tells you what was going on inside there. 
and unfortunately the first time around the camera stopped. I do apologize. But make sure it's nice and clean that you get all the sand and grease and junk out of there. Then you can reinstall your pinion gear and your bearing and your collar. There's two holes that that collar goes in. Use a pin to align them. And then those of you that watch my channel know it's probably time to go get a cup of coffee or tea because me and these small screws may just take a little while to get this done. I'm going to use some grease to see if I can hold it that way. And I think that's it. I think what happened here was that we had, after I had dismissed the bent axle shaft as the cause because of the uh, the way it was gliding smoothly through that uh, pinion gear, then the next probable cause was the uh, the grease or the, the dried salt and debris on that crosswind block. So it's a little bit of a Sherlock Holmes kind of thing, right? You, you do got to get in there and take a look. You got to have a hypothesis, I guess, if I'm not a science person, but I guess you have to have a hypothesis of what the potential issue could be. And then you want to just see if you can prove that out and proving it out is process of elimination. All right, collar for that anti-reverse goes on. Now there's a stud here, right on this collar here, a little bit of dirt or grease or something on that. There's a swing arm on this anti-reverse that pivots over that stud, just like that. Now you're locked in place with that. And you can go ahead and take that uh, shroud Put that on, make sure that it's sealed all the way around. Take those two screws that I left on my desk there, and, and that's the top end. So if you're servicing the reel, that's how you do the top end of this reel. Fairly easy. In this case, that was very cooperative, given all of the uh, salt in that. I was surprised that the pinion gear came out as easily as it did. So while I'm doing this, if you like these kinds of videos, I'd ask you to subscribe to my channel. And if you uh, subscribe, please hit the notification button. That way you'll see all the videos that I'm posting. And uh, you'll find out which ones you like and which ones uh, you want to watch. And that's all a good thing. So no hang-up whatsoever. Remember, we're testing. No hang-up whatsoever in this gear. We have an override on the anti-reverse. All good. Uh, to remove this gear, all you simply do is pull this screw clean out behind it. I've done that unfortunately on the last one, so I'm not going to show you here. Get a good amount of grease onto the back end of this. Get a good amount of grease onto the stud area as well. Okay, this bearing in the back belongs there. It's held in place by a little uh, pentagon clip that's going to clip into the back of this gear. And again, when I took that off, I uh, was off camera, I guess. But you can see it here. There's a little clip that's that right where my fingernail is. Uh, that's going to ride. You're going to want to make sure that uh, when you go to reassemble, you get that clip back on. All right. So now we can kind of reverse our process, right? We've got the larger. There's, there's two different sizes of this, so it's hard to mess up. This one's got a thicker diameter. This one's going to go through the case. And it's going to go through the hole here. And then you want to, oops, I didn't, uh, as I'm saying this, I didn't get any new grease after I cleaned the old one out. Let's get grease in that channel there. Okay, so through the hole. Over the stud and push this up, and it seats in the hole in the side case here, just like that. This is a little bit of a gate here, so now that you have that, oh, it's not seated completely. Guess I knocked it out when I put it down. There we go. Kind of have to hold your hand on it if you don't want it to move. 
Uh, so this is a little bit of a gate effect. So you can pick this up, and then this one's going to ride in the channel there. You can see the two indentations. And this is an open face here on this side. Hard for you to see, but it kind of looks like the letter C. Hopefully you can see it that way. So it just slides in. You open gate it, you slide it over that little cushion, lock that in this side. I still didn't hold that piece down apparently. So all you need is a little patience on this. You'll get it eventually. Even when you know what you're doing, sometimes it's a little difficult. There we go. All right, we're back in with that. Main gear without that clip, bearing on the back side. Go ahead and load that in. And you're gonna have to check on the back side now because that bearing without that clip is gonna ride loose. So you may have to just kind of find a way to tap that down, get it centered. Okay, and then once you have that down, now you need that little pentagon clip. And, and it just, that's it. Goes over the top. And it's gonna seat in the groove that I was pointing out before. Usually if you get one side in, you can, you can work it around the other way. In this case, I might need uh, two of these little picks to make it work. With that locked in place, let's just come back over here where I lost that little gate piece. Again, you can kind of start this. Pick this up a little bit. the bar there, get it on the one side, get it in the other. Okay, it's back in. Yay. All right, now we need to get the axle shaft back in. And we tested that and that one was doing fine. A little bit of grease on the axle shaft. Flat side is going to the front here so that we can get that screw in. Just like that. Now I need a long screw in my micro driver. And hopefully I don't dump this into the body. There we go. So yeah, I don't know why they hit it like this. I guess they're just trying to be ingenious. Is that a good term for it? But they figured out that this would be a way to do it. And I guess that's what they chose to do. All right. So that's back now. We have the bearing inside the case. You can see all of that salt residue and old grease in there. Not, still a hypothesis. We haven't tested this yet, but still a hypothesis that it was all this old stuff in here that finally got jammed in this crook here or inside on that uh, piece that um, is in the slide for the cross wind block. And one way or another, it just inhibited the performance. So I don't think it was related at all to the fact that he just caught a lot of fish and something just failed under the stress of the day. I think it was just that uh, something finally caught up with him there in terms of uh, bad movement. That bearing was not oiled previously. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can't put this whole thing back on now. Nice tight case. Let's go ahead and load this in. Three screws. Then the bump guard. I'm being particularly cautious at the moment because that little bar that we slid in there can slide right out again. And you really don't want to go through all that work one more time if you don't have to. So what did we do here in terms of problem diagnosis? What we did was we tried to eliminate factors. You start with a thought of what it might be. And my thoughts came to two pieces, neither which turned out to be true. But my first thought was that the axle shaft was bent because it seemed to be jamming on the high point of the stroke. Now, even though that was wrong, it did tell me something about the problem was when the stroke was at the highest point on that uh, the crosswind assembly. And as it turns out, when we looked at the crosswind block, um, 
the, the issue seemed to identify itself because we had a, a lot of uh, grease and gunk and junk buildup there. And uh, that, in the end, is probably what did it in. I'm hoping. We haven't tested this thing yet. All right, so the bump guard is back on. There's a small screw that goes in that bump guard. They call them bump guards because when you're uh, using this reel, if you hit something like a, a gun wall of a boat, a railing on a pier, or you drop the reel, they, uh, this is designed to take the impact, sort of like a case on a phone. You'd rather ruin this piece than you would the, uh, the, the case itself. All right, that's on. Next up then would be to install our rotor. The rotor has two flat sides. Look for the flat sides on your, on your gear. That was easy. So they should all be that easy. And we put our, our main nut back on. And we hope. Tighten that down. We have our bearing and washer, and this thing went the other way in terms of the bearing and washer, so I'm going to put them on the shaft the way they came out. This is where pictures help. If you're, uh, if you're not sure about the piece, then you go back to your picture and say, well, wh which way did it go on? It kind of came off this way, and that thin washer was next up, like that. Then we can install our spool. Spool nut. Tension adjuster knob, probably, by the book. Oops. That was an oops. I'm looking in my parts tray, which is a beautiful reason for having a parts tray, and I noticed that I didn't put down the tie-down screw on the rotor. Let's go do that. I've come to learn from experience that that Dawn parts tray is one of the best things ever thought of. And I didn't, I, certainly I didn't think about it. I guess anybody who's an auto mechanic knows. Now let's put it back. I got the one side button from the part of the reel that uh, does not take the handle. handle and then we're going to give it a crank and we'll see. And I'm hopeful because I think that there was enough there that it probably made a difference. So let's take a look. Well look at that would you? We got a reel that goes up and down without uh, hesitation. All right so there you go. It's a little bit about problem diagnosis, eliminating causes, having a little bit of a theory, thinking what might be the issue and uh, then trying to work your way around it to uh, See if you can't narrow it down and uh, rectify the issue. So we were fortunate we didn't have any broken parts in this. And uh, at the end of the day, it, uh, it's ready to go fishing again. Has a second chance to catch those big fish that Eric was chasing. So uh, with that, I thank you again if you're a first responder and if you're essential personnel. And I wish you a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Keep watching, stay safe, stay fishing.